Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to have the tutorial step-by-step -step on how to assemble your early medieval basic tunic or gown. This tutorial assumes that you already have a pattern that looks something like this, whether you got it from my first video, which I will link below, or from another source, and it assumes that you also have cut out your pieces. There are two things worth noting. I do not recommend cutting the neck out of the body pieces at this point, and I also do not recommend cutting the slit in the neck facing. We're going to approach this in a systematic fashion, starting at the top. So first we're going to assemble the shoulder seams, then add the neck facing, which is the most complicated part of the process. After that, we will assemble each sleeve, then put the sleeves into the body, add the godets or the gores, sew it closed and finish it up. Starting at the shoulders then, you're going to pin the front and back pieces together, sew it with a one half inch seam, iron it open so it lays flat on the front, and then iron your seam allowances over so that you can finish them. I have here my two long body pieces. I'm going for almost floor length and I'm going to sew the short edge together. I'm going to use a half inch seam, which is marked out on the plate on my machine so I can just follow the line. Get it started, backstitch it. Line up the edges because I didn't pin it very much. As I get close to the edge, I need to make sure that these two ends are lined up really well. All the way to the other end and backstitch. Now I need to press the seam open so that it lays flat when we wear it. Usually when you're finishing seams, you first press it open from the back. That makes the front lay super flat. There are several ways to finish the seam allowances, but if you roll them both to one side and then top stitch through all the layers of fabric, it does add some mechanical strength to your seam. So for a seam like the top of the shoulder, which will have some mechanical tension on it, I'm going to use that method. Then I'm going to roll that seam under and press it flat. That is now a seam allowance that needs to be stitched down. I could do this with a top stitch on the sewing machine. I'm a plenty straight enough hand for that and it would be quicker, but I'm going to take this to the couch in a minute and sit down with my coffee and have a nice relaxing time hand stitching. Instead, I'm just gonna show you how to start this with a whip stitch. Tied a knot that's going to be hidden by my future seam allowance at the shoulder. And then just go over a little and scoop forward. I like whip stitch for these fine, fluffy sorts of hems. So whip stitch is super fast. And every now and then I'm gonna tie an extra knot for security by just running it back through the seam allowance and through itself. Move my grip down an inch. All this is doing is making it so that that seam cannot come unrolled when I wash this and that those raw edges will never be exposed to fraying or unraveling. And here it is on the front. Okay, I'm off to the couch. Adding the neck facing is one of the most difficult parts of the process. You're going to start out by laying your garment out in front of you with the wrong side facing up. Add the wrong side of the neck facing, facing up on top of it. 
get everything lined up beautifully, and then sew all the way around the neck and around the center front slit, which at this point is just marked with a pen or chalk. And I've gone ahead and laid it out on my board with the wrong side facing up. I'm now going to put my neck facing on top of it, lining up the center marks of my fabric with the center mark on my neck facing. And most of our neck is actually to the front of midline, and so I want to arrange that as well. Okay, center lines are set. Now I'm just going to check my width off of center, make sure everything is even, because fabric, as you notice, can be a little squirrely on the bias. Okay. In this particular case, I don't have a right or wrong side to my facing, but if I did, I would also have its wrong side facing up. So two wrong sides, two back sides, both facing me. And now I am going to put many, many pins in this. You might be wondering why I tell people not to cut the neck out of the main body before they assemble it. And the main reason is the facing is already one big bias piece. If I were to cut the neck out of the body, it would also become a bunch of bias angles. And trying to get them both to sew together without one of them stretching differently than the other one can be, shall we say, challenging. Okay, so there we have a porcupine ready to sew. And I'm only going to sew the center. I just pinned the outer edge so that the whole thing can't shift. Again, start sewing. First few stitches, back stitch. Now I'm going to take my time. I'm going to go all the way around the circle, maintaining the same seam allowance. Here, where I'm going over the shoulder seam, I'm going to back stitch for reinforcement because I'm crossing another line of stitching that I'm going to cut. It's okay to lift your presser foot and move the fabric around as long as you make sure your needle is down. Here's where we are when I realize that I forgot to mark for the center front slit. So I am going to come around and I'm going to sew around the center front slit with a very narrow margin down, across a tiny box, up, and then continue my neck. And here we are. Get you a close up. Now, I just have this. I'm going to cut the center out. Snip. And that is scrap into the trash can. Now, I have a neck hole. I need to cut the slit, and again, be extremely careful to cut exactly on your mark, not left, not right, right down the center of the box that you sewed. And do not cut all the way to the end. Stop a little bit short, maybe an eighth of an inch. So you'll have eighth inch borders all around. And then, take a look at it. You'll probably need to make little tiny diagonal cuts. Again, not all the way to the corner. You need to leave some threads behind for structure. But tiny little diagonal cuts to release the pressure so that when you stretch this out, it can do what you need it to do. Okay, there we are. You can see how it will give. After you've sewn your neck facing all the way around and cut it out and cut the slit, you're going to take tiny little snips all the way around called clipping the curves. This helps the fabric to fold in like an accordion when you turn it inside out. The next thing I need to do is to clip this curve, but I don't want to do it without stabilizing it first. So I'm going to put it back on the machine and zigzag overlock the edge all the way around this raw edge. There we go. You can already see 
just from stitching at that little bit how much these two bias lines have stretched together. Again, this is why I never cut the hole out of the body until I've got the neck attached because that stay stitch will keep it behaved. Now, we need to do what's called clipping the curve. I'm gonna take my scissors and nip not all the way to my sewing line, but nip partway to it, leaving at least five or six good sturdy threads behind. You can see the edges where the curve has been clipped. All right, time for magic. That neck facing is going to be rolled to the outside of the garment and all of a sudden you will have a finished right side out neck on top of a finished right side out body. You want to do a little bit of stitching around the outer edge to finalize it and then this step is complete. We're going to take this and start rolling it to the outside of the garment which is its permanent home. I'm going to pin as I go just a few times to help keep it in place so I can get the iron on it. Now the magic. Flip this so that the outside is facing me. Bring my iron up to a appropriate temperature, nothing too hot. Because it'll take a little bit of ironing to work the puckers out of this bottom corner where we turn such a sharp angle and the iron will help. Okay, there's the finished neck turned to the outside. Last step, I'm going to tuck under this outer edge and then stitch it down either by hand or by machine. More ironing. Tuck under, lay flat, pin. Tuck under, lay flat. Pin. That is now a neck with machine stitching all the way around. Ready for the next step. The next big step is the sleeves. We will first make each sleeve entire as a sub-assembly, then attach them to the body. We're going to use an old quilter's trick to get the right angles to come together cleanly when you insert the gusset into the sleeve by marking a point one seam allowance in from each edge off of the point of the gusset, sewing to the point, sewing the other side to the point, and then sewing from that point to the end of the sleeve. By bringing all three seams together to the exact same spot, you end up with a perfect, beautiful point where all the seams come together. Sleeves, gussets. This is where you might find a marking pencil handy. I'm going to use a pen. I'm working on the back side, so I don't care if it can't wash out. And I'm going to mark one half inch in, one half inch over, and that dot is what I'm going to sew to. Here's my dot. My dot. Now I'm going to sew to my dot. Straight stitch, one half inch seam allowance on the fabric, one. Now I'm going to take this side at this corner bring it around to the other side of my sleeve. So these are on adjacent corners to each other. And pin. See the dot? Now that I have the gusset, I'm going to finish assembling the sleeve itself. Again, pulling the seam allowance out of the way. I'm going to start exactly on my point. And I'm going to sew to the end of the sleeve. Again, there's my point. Slide this under. 
Get the seam allowance out of the way. Start exactly on the point, as close to it as I can get. Stitch, back stitch, and so. And there, with all of the wrong sides on the same side as each other, I have one sleeve. I am not going to do most of the ironing and finishing yet because this is going to change a little bit in fitting. What I am going to do is just the gusset. I have a pressing hem, also known as a kitchen towel, rolled in a tube if you don't have one of these little guys. Same trick as always. Press the seam open and then press the seam to one side. Press it down. One. Okay, we have sleeves. Now we're going to put them in the body. It's a really simple process. There are only two things to keep straight. First of all, with the body inside out, you need to put the right side out sleeve into it. Second of all, just like you did with the gusset to sleeve, you're going to mark a point, one seam allowance in and one seam allowance over. And then you are going to sew the sleeve all the way around, starting and stopping on that exact point. I will start by turning the body inside out so that the neck facing is hidden. I will then put the sleeve right side out Slide it into the body, lining up the center top of the sleeve with the shoulder seam. Gently bring it down the side and pin a few more times. Stopping one half inch from the end of the gusset that is already attached to the sleeve body. And now the other side. Okay, now I have a sleeve in a body and I'm going to sew it. When I get near the end, I'm going to look for my starting point and sew as close as I can to it without actually touching the earlier stitching. If we take a look at this and turn the whole thing right side out, I have a right side out sleeve on the outside of the body. All the seams are turned in. That's why it's important to get things oriented correctly. I'm going to do the other sleeve using the magic of video. Now I have sewn two sleeves in and I will give you a quick preview. Again, I'm working inside out, but when I turn it right side out, I now have two sleeves and all of the seam allowances are on the inside just like they should be. After your godets are assembled, if you piece them like I did, it's time to add them to the body. You'll notice that the side seam is not sewn yet and that is on purpose. Just like everything else, you're going to mark a point one seam allowance in and one seam allowance over on your godet. Sew up one side, sew up the other side. Then sew the side seam. I have two large godets. One that I cut as a single piece and one that needs to be assembled. I'm using a narrow seam allowance so that this panel is not noticeably narrower than the other one, but it's actually too small to roll. So I'm going to have to take the seam allowance and 
overstitch it instead. That is just the seam. Now I'm going to go back over it with a zigzag stitch on my machine. And now that has a lock stitch that will stabilize the raw edge if need be. And we're back. I have one body with the sleeves assembled and two godets, one of which I had to pre-assemble before I could do this step. What I'm going to do now, leaving the body with the right sides to the inside, I'm going to open that up. I'm going to put my godet with the right side touching the right side of the body. I am going to pin these together all the way down their length. I'm going to sew it. And I have one side of one godet sewn in. Now what I need to do is sew the other side of the godet in, making sure that I have the same side of the body. I am going to pin it at the bottom and I'm going to check it against the underarm gusset because this all has to line up. And then I am going to sew. I'm going to sew this in two parts. First, the, go, the godet itself to the point, and then I'm going to take my needle out, move all the fabric around, and sew the side seam from the point of the gusset to the point of the godet, and that will finish a whole side. I'm identifying the point at which I stop my prior sewing. I'm joining the point and back stitching. Pull it off, move that point out of the way, bring it back around, and start the next stitch right on top of that point. Now, identifying my point at the gusset, aiming for it as closely as I can. Again, if this is the top, this is the lower hem. There is the back side of the godet sewn in. And here is the front side. By doing my best to put all those points together neatly, we have a junction where they all come together and it looks pretty sharp. Now, with the magic of video, we'll do the other one. Okay, with that, I have all of the pieces assembled, and I'm going to turn it right side out so you can get a quick preview of the finished piece. And here, we have a gown. Congratulations, you now have a rough garment, and it's time to do the fitting and the finishing work. Always do fitting with the garment inside out. It makes it a lot easier to pin and adjust any of the seams that you need to adjust. And start at the top and work your way down. With this pattern, there are two places where you can tighten the fit, mostly in the lower part of the sleeve and in the waist. So feel free to do that if you want to. So here's where we are so far. We're going to do fitting from the top down. First, I'm going to look at the neck. I'm going to look at the sleeves. I've already tightened them up. I've already tightened them up, and I'm going to check my length once I take the hem out and make sure I'm pleased with that. Then I'm going to look at the waist. There's a lot of room in this waist, and I'd like to take some out. I've pinned it as a temporary. There are two things that are going to restrict me. One, 
the sheer number of seams, if you take too much out, it makes the seams look bulky and weird. Number two, the bigger one, I still have to be able to pull this off over my head and the waist has to go over my bust and my shoulders to get it off. So I'm gonna to try to wiggle out of this with the pins where they are and if I like it, I'm gonna sew it and come back for the next stage. If you took the short sleeved option, this is going to be the time to square up the lower edge so that it lays parallel to the ground when your arm is down at your side. Okay, so I've taken about four inches out of the waist. It isn't much, you get the rest of it just by belting these in, and you have to belt it in to finish checking the rest of it. First of all, do I have enough fullness to walk? Yes, I feel like I have as much as I need for a long gown. When you check the fullness, you might find that you want to add a little bit more to the lower hem. It's easy to add more to any existing seams and difficult, but not impossible, to add one by cutting straight into the center panel. If you want to do that, watch some tutorials on how to do a perfect inset godet. And then second of all, I need to look at the hem and see how wavy it is and what I need to do to straighten it up. Uh, it can be a little bit tough to do by yourself. It takes a full length mirror, a ruler, some pins, and patience. So to mark the lower hem, the best thing to do is to belt your garment, put it on, and then using either a friend with chalk or yourself and a whole bunch of pins, mark the lower edge where you're going to cut the garment at the same height above the floor all the way around. I tell you to use pins if you're doing this by yourself because you're probably going to make a mistake and pins are easier to move than chalk is to erase. Okay, I'm back after trimming the lower hem to length. Here we are without a belt. And I show you this to illustrate why you really have to wear a belt to do the final fitting. It changes the bottom length a lot and how it's going to ride with the belt. You're now in the final steps of finishing and hemming. You need to finish any remaining seams on the inside so that they cannot unravel in the wash, whatever that takes. You can see the nice finishing details all around the inside of the seams and how I brought the points together at the end of the godet. Finally, once you have all your seams finished, it's time to finish the hems. I've allowed a one inch hem on the sleeves. This means that you fold up one half an inch, iron it down, fold it up again, iron it down, and then stitch that edge in place, either by hand or by machine. It's the same idea for the lower hem. I've allowed two inches for this if you want to use it to get a heavier hem that swings a little bit better. The one thing to know about the lower hem is that this is a curved edge. It's bigger on the outside than it is on the inside. So as you fold that hem in, you're going to have to make little tiny tucks hidden inside the allowance and sew those down in order to make it fit correctly. When you're doing a hem that's been marked to be the same distance above the ground all the way around, you always mark the final distance that you want to remove from the hem, in this case one inch, and then fold it up and iron that flat. After that, you fold under the top one quarter inch or so, and then iron that flat. You'll find that the curve edge bends better if you use a narrower margin for the top edge. You can see here that I am using a ruler, a seam gauge, and chalk to mark it, but if you have a hem gauge, it's even easier because you can simply fold up your curved hem to the curved one inch line and iron right on top of the hem gauge. After that, it's the same idea. Fold down the top one quarter inch and proceed. Take your time working all the way around the garment until you finish and get to the other side. Then you're going to want to go all the way around that lower edge and pin the hem in place. Use a lot of pins on the curves because they are going to help you tuck in and fold up that extra volume from the curve into a nice even tuck. Sew the curve in place by hand or by machine. I used a hand whip stitch for my example. Finally, you need to add a way to close the keyhole neckline. There are a lot of choices for this, and the decision is mostly aesthetic, or it can be based on what you have on hand. You can always put on string ties now and cut them off later after you buy a nice pin, 
or you can go fancy with lacing or buttons and spend your time finishing this last detail. Whatever you choose, this is the end of our process. You should now have your nakedness covered. You have a garment and you are ready to go to a medieval event and have fun. I wish you the best of luck and I hope you have a great time doing it. Huzzah!